Hi everyone, this is Joshua Hoffman and welcome to another episode of the Masters in Marketing Agency podcast, where we deconstruct the why and how agency owners found their success and discuss a few things they learned along the way. Today I have Mario Mirabella, the CEO of MSM Digital, a New York-based digital marketing agency specializing in brand strategy and awareness, social and Google marketing, lead gen, and web development. Welcome, Mario. Hi, Josh. How are you? Good, good. And so I, for this one, want to jump right into it because I think you have a pretty interesting story and approach into marketing. So uh, can you actually just kind of open up and tell us your story about the how and why uh, you actually went from turntables uh, yeah. to computers? <laughs> the turntables. Um, that's a really cool, fun fact because back in the mid 90s, well, be specific, 96 is when I bought my first computer. But I got the money to do that at the time by selling my beloved turntables and getting out of the DJing game. Um, and I was able to go ahead and get my first uh, setup. And, and that just that started it all from that moment. What, what made you want to go from your music life to computer life? I think it's because I was fascinated by the uh, just the technology overall the world of the internet that I kept hearing so much about, but never really had the exposure, uh, you know, all those previous years, you know, nowadays kids are exposed to that, <laughs> like three years old, maybe. But um, so that's how it started. And, uh, you know, I just jumped into it. I got rid of my setup. Um, I still miss it to this day. But of course, it set the stage for me to, to where I, you know, where I am today and what I was able to accomplish. Well, I guess like, don't take this the wrong way, but like you're, you're, you're not a normal coder, right? Like you're not uh, the person who's quiet sitting, you know, in a dark oh. room all the time. You're, you're, you're oh. not that. So, you know, what, is there anything else that yeah, kind of drew no, you into I, that I world? I don't fit the profile at all. Um, especially when people, <laughs> When I was able to tell them I could fix computers, build them and such, I do not fit the typical kind of profile with that. Um, but um, it was just being very curious, being very curious and wanting to learn and be a sponge and, and really get my hands involved in all of that. Um, and, um, you know, it, the, the fascination really started from a graphic standpoint, though. That's that's what really drew me in, because I guess I, I've always was a creative type of person and now being able to create things um, just from thoughts, you know, just being um, uh, having an imagination really uh, is really where it stemmed from. But then the other side is, oh, how can we make things functional? Wow, that's a whole different world. I got to start learning how to code. And, uh, you know, I started in Notepad uh, to tell you the truth of how, how it really started. There was no software. Um, that I was exposed to from from that point. Uh, eventually, I got involved in like Front Page and Dreamweaver back in the day. Um, but that's how it all started. How can we get things functional? <laughs> Wait, so did you did you have like like do you have like a first project uh, or anything that you're like, damn, this is something I want to do? Um, the first, well, <laughs> from a personal standpoint, it was an AOL page. Um, you know, that was just a personal project. But as far as work goes. With the website you're yeah, saying, like, like a website yeah, that obviously it started with the website, right. started with my own, and the obsession with Photoshop uh, began and filters because that was huge. So, everything I was setting on fire, smoke, chrome, chromed everything out, chromed everything out. Um, and it started with uh, doing those type of designs and playing around with logos, and uh, you know, that was the initial obsession. You know, what, what can I do there before, you know, starting to shift now to a more of a business approach, you know, um, then of course, building my own first company website. So, which ha actually happened in 99. So that's where it all began from MSM designs at the time. So, so let's jump right into that then. Uh, do you mind kind of telling us a little bit more about how the company started yeah. and the beginning days? That'll all tie in then with, with the work and such. So in 1999, I started MSM Designs. Um, zero background in, in design and in marketing and 
in, in advertising, anything, um, did not have any sort of formal experience, nor did I have any sort of education. I'm all completely self-taught in that area. However, I did have many interesting jobs and positions prior. I think that led me to being an entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, we could talk a little bit about that. But I started MSM, um, basically a web and graphic design company. That's, it was me. And I started designing. Um, no portfolio. And I needed to do some work. I needed to build that up. And initially, we started um, doing free work. So I started to, to talk to friends and friends of friends who might need something. Do you need a website? Do you need a logo? I had no idea how to price anything. But again, I had nothing to show. So I basically said, hey, I'll do it for free. You know, what do you need? Um, and that's how it all started. And I'll never forget the first project. Again, it became... Uh, it was a referral. It was a friend of a friend who owned a travel agency and the travel agency had a website. It was OK. I remember at the time, but they started a new division specializing in cruises. And that was my first project, first real website. And the site, I'll never forget, it was called the Cruise Dudes. And I remember the logo was two guys in like Hawaiian shirts, side by side, looking sideways with sunglasses on, and they were the cruise dudes. And um, I designed this header with like a wave, kind of water effect looking, big buttons. What a real disaster if you look at it now today, but at the time, it was it, was it. It was like, wow, look at this. Um, I was teaching myself at the time also Flash, which I loved. And we were like a flash agency for many years. Um, but so we had some animation. Uh, so we had some cool stuff going on. I think I had a boat moving like somewhere in the header. Um, <laughs> that was the first one. And that kind of set that that really set the stage now for new projects. <laughs> No, that that's great. Uh, when was the last time you used that style animation or Chrome oh or Flames God. on a website? No, that that, that, <laughs> that died pretty quickly. Um, anime, the animation <laughs> became more polished. I I used to love my old Flash work, so I kind of learned pretty quickly that the Flames and the Chrome and all those eye candy filters. We're, we're great for certain things, but for our real companies, um, we had to tone it down, number one. Number two, I learned that you couldn't produce that via print, you know, not having, again, that foundation and knowledge of print and how that all works, um, that cannot be replicated um, in, say, if someone is getting shirts or, or like embroidery done things like that. Like you could maybe screen print, but it was like difficult to do certain mm -hmm. cards and whatnot, unless it was just full color. It was full color gloss and yeah, maybe. Um, but it, it wasn't the most friendly looking thing. So we had to move away from that. Um, but the flash and the animation became more polished now. Now we start to learn more of what's trending at the time. And um, the flash intros were big. Those were my favorite uh transition effects animation music uh sound effects that was that was all great um i love the fact that the time with flash that you you didn't have to worry about scrolling everything was built within um so that was kind of cool so and you know i i usually ask this uh to most people because i think obviously the first customer is important but I, I think that the second customer is even more important um because that kind of starts the trend that's the second data point um, so do you have any kind of story of how you guys got the second, your second customer? The second customer came from the, a relative from the first, that's how it worked. So, you know, when starting out and this is, this is holds true today and advice that I would still give, um, uh, on how you would, you got to get the ball moving somehow is to really start with your inner circle and utilize relationships that you currently have. That's how you're going to get the ball moving. Um, what I've done with the first 
free project, let's call it, with the with the cruise dudes, led me then to a restaurant group because there was the the relation. And that was my first paid project. And that project, or I should say the relationship, that lasted a number of years, number of years. The company had several locations. We started very, I mean, I would love to go back in time. I still remember what their website looks like to today, the logo that I developed at the time, and then how that evolved. I was like, it was like a real milestone for me to see something that I created then and have it like etched in their glass on their windows and stuff. That was all kind of cool. Well, I guess that was the next stage, right? Like you saw it was your head into digital and then this is now getting into yeah, physical. Yeah, right, right. Um, and, and we evolved as they were growing and expanding. We started to do more work for them. Um, they might have been even one of my very, very first food photography projects. I got into that then at some point in time too and and started providing photography and of course a hobby that turned into a service that in, that turned into award winning photography uh when it comes to food. So uh that particular client um it in just uh, in recent years they ended up selling and they um they changed their name and whatnot. Um but it was an excellent run and a few websites too for their locations. So that was the second one. We we did talk previously uh, about perks to a job, and I know that you sometimes would get to eat uh, the meal after you took a picture of it. So my actual question behind this is, uh, what was the best dish that you got oh, to wow. eat after? That's a, yeah, that's a, a, that's a tough question because <laughs> I mean there was there's been a lot of a lot of restaurants and Italian food. Um, and then I, I, I also worked with a few steakhouses and, and that was really good too. Um, but I have to probably lean back towards some of the Italian restaurant clients, one of my favorite foods. Um, so definitely one of those clients, um, you know, a chicken scarp dish, if you ever had that is probably going to be one of the top. Um, and, and that's, that's a beautiful dish with chicken usually sausage sliced sausage in it potatoes um and hot peppers sometimes they throw some vinegar peppers in it that's a beautiful dish uh so i'm, I'm gonna go with maybe one of those <laughs> chicken scarp I, I don't i don't know chicken a, that's, i say it i i abbreviate it but scarp periello yeah, um, you'll see that on almost any Perfect. menu in an italian joint um I, I write a lot of notes during yeah. these calls, and I think that's that's the most yeah. important one. I can give uh, you an exact to. spelling of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm <you> sure. <laughs> um, and so, how do you guys get new customers now? So, getting new customers and 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 building up new clientele, I have to go back to the beginning, the original foundation and groundwork of building relationships. That needs to be key. No matter what business you have, whatever you're in, you need to focus on that. That's key. Now, we all heard about the three factors of the no like, and trust. That is so important when, when building these relationships. You can't expect initially to gain business or referrals right off the bat. That's never going to happen with, with people who may not know who you are, or what you do exactly, no trust or credibility has been really established. However, the importance of relationship building is going to set the stage to build up your own personal brand, your authority. It's going to expand your network. That's how people are going to know who you are. And then people are going to do business with you once you develop that trust and credibility. So I have to always go back to that original framework, really, to call it. You know, that game plan is to look at your surroundings, who's in your, your network or what networks can you get involved in and, and be that person. Get out there. Shake hands with people. You know, you want to be in those circles. Get in those rooms because that's how you're going to establish yourself. Now, that's always got to be top of mind in any sort of outreach program. But on the flip side... In, in, in what we're doing today, in, in, in you know, now 24 years in this industry, is we're doing more strategic type of outreach at the same time. And 
that is really focusing on social marketing, uh, Google marketing. How can we really pick out certain industries that we want to work with and go after those decision makers? So we have a combination going on right now, and there's different strategies on what we do. So uh, that's been the focus now on how can we be more aggressive with our outreach. And and I know you mentioned uh, going through a rebrand recently. Can you just kind of talk about why you went through that rebrand? Yeah, sure. I mean, it it um, it should have happened probably um, um, you know almost ten years ago, but um, we have always been looked at as a creative agency, and that's our that was our brand messaging for so long, and it, it never really changed. The name suggested that as well. But we have been really, we evolved to a digital marketing agency probably 10 years ago because of the new services and, and things we were starting to implement. I mean, I started the social media division in the company around 2010, 2011 is when that division was was born, so to speak. Um, and, um, you know, my mindset at that point in time was a little different because I didn't understand yet how we can make money off of things like that or blogging, writing for people and so on. My background and all I was used to was design and development, you know, a direct line towards revenue. Um, so we wanted to change our direction last year. That was really the turning point. I wanted to set the stage really for additional growth. How can we scale? And it had to come back to the brand. We had to look internally on what we can do differently here to have more of a cohesive look and feel and brand messaging that bigger companies that we're going to start targeting, it made sense to them. So we changed to, we rebranded to MSM Digital. We changed our entire brand messaging that became more consistent. And we start to focus internally too. Um, to start to tighten up things as well, because the services that we're putting out there, we wanted the brand to really reflect that when we're pitching bigger companies. So it all made sense. So that was the turning point for the brand. I, I, before we kind of go too far off the topic, you said something earlier about how I think it was coding um, that you kind of learned it by yourself and. The question I really wanted to ask so much that I'm bringing this question back is, did you see any, were there any benefits and or negatives to learning by yourself that you kind of identified? Um, learning, well, I guess you have pros and cons really because one, um, you know, could, could definitely be a little bit slower, right? Um, because you have to figure things out on your own. Um, you maybe are not quite sure where to start by doing things on your own, but it did allow me to take advantage of any resources that were out there and be a more proactive. So in this entire industry for me and anything I ever learned in this industry from design, coding, um, marketing itself and Google strategies, I taught myself SEO at that time. Um, the importance of, of backlinking at the time. That was a huge milestone for me. Three years into the company and becoming number one in Google for a keyword phrase that I was targeting for New York. Um, you know, it was, all, it was all about doing your own research and, and, and being aggressive. And I think, um, you know, to this day, I'm still able to decipher certain code uh, if there's a particular problem by going into the back end of the source, you know, and that's not, I tell you the truth, that's not common, um, not common for a company owner at this stage of the game for someone to go in there and be able to figure stuff like that out. And that's because my hands were involved in it from the get go. Same thing with design. I, I can guarantee you that many CEOs of marketing agencies have no idea what goes on in Photoshop. Um, and I just think that's a huge advantage, huge advantage of understanding the process all we, and as well as setting your standard for quality control 
you know, that's another big factor with having that back end knowledge. You know, you have your own standards. Even when I'm working with new talent, if it's an employee, if it's a freelancer, subcontractor, I have the inside knowledge. So that gives us an advantage when bringing on new people, whether or not they're doing the right thing for you. So, um, so that's huge. So I think, I think there's more pros than cons when you're trying to figure things out for yourself, for sure. You know? So what about the skills you don't have? Um, you know, how do you make sure that those are covered properly? Well, you always have to surround yourself with talent. And that's what happened back then. There was a time where the requests were beyond me. What do I mean by that? Database requests, um, e-commerce, things like that. Things that I weren't, I, I just were not skilled in at the, at the time. It was beyond my coding, programming, you know, knowledge. So you have to start bringing in talent and you have to start building your team and you have to start looking at people who can make the brand, the overall company stronger and better. Still have that mentality today. It was huge back in, uh, back last year. When we wanted to do more and better, that was really the model of what I was trying to accomplish. How can we do more and better for our clients? Let's start looking at other types of talent, uh, different specialists that may just focus on ads, ad campaigns. How can we do more there? How can we uh, start developing new brand strategies? Start bringing in more talent there. Um, I say this a lot at times. I'm only as good as my team. You know, that's, that's, that's something to, to really, that's an important line. You know, I could, I could speak with people, do business development all day, but if we can't execute, we're going to lose that client. So surrounding yourself with, with talent and a strong team is crucial to any sort of operation to be successful in this type of industry. So early on, did you hire more full-time employees or did you go the contractor route? contractor route to build this agency was all the contractor route and anybody who's starting up in this in this position now you have to utilize that the contractors nowadays they're stronger than ever they're stronger than ever there's an abundance of them i've learned you know uh trial and error that's <laughs> you're going to go through those phases of people working out, people not working out. You got to test them out. You got to take a look. You got to do your due diligence of what they've done and um, their, their past portfolio experiences and whatnot. I've got a good um, eye for that now after all of these years. Um, Why and how? Well, you know, if you've worked with enough of them um, and they're from all, all over the place, all different countries and whatnot, um, there's some telltale signs of, of their knowledge and their experience. Um, just the way they're speaking about how they would possibly handle a project. You know, what are the, what, what's the languages that they know? Um, I, I one time had a person, this wasn't a contractor, this was an employee that I brought in. I gave them a trial. They were a developer. They told me they were an expert WordPress developer. Okay. We go ahead and we, um, we start on a first project. Designs are already done. And the way we were, the way we develop, we don't use themes or templates. We design first, custom designs. So I hand off those Photoshop files to this developer, like a deer in headlights. No idea what to do. No idea what to do. Because he was used to working off of templates? That's right, which yeah. is very common. You go yeah. ahead and you install a WordPress theme and you customize it. That's not what we do. So thank you for your time. You know, but we we need different skills in here. Um, so you you start to learn really, you know, the the foundation of a particular employee, whether it's a designer or a developer. We could even talk about designers. Not all designers design for web. There's they don't have that mindset. They don't have that vision. They I used to call print designers. I said they they're CMYK people. You know, that's what they do. They understand print. They cannot somehow translate that to web. Um, now, some people are hybrid, um, and I've had that on staff, which were all stars. But a lot of the print side, graphic designers don't understand that because they don't understand functionality. 
So if you don't understand functionality, how can you design for web? How can you design for that user experience? It's just, it's, it doesn't exist. Um, so as a solopreneur starting out, you know, I, I would know your stuff first. I would get a good foundation of, of uh, your skill set. It's not easy. It's not easy. I, I was speaking to someone that was finishing their degree in marketing, and he was deciding whether or not he was going to try and work for an agency or do things on his own. More people fail because it's just not doing the work. If you're a marketing guy, what's your real skill set? You know how many hats I had to wear um, from those early days? And still, I still wear a handful. You have to. You could be a rock star with social media. How are you going to gain clients if you don't have that skill set? Building customer relations, networking, whatever it might be. Um, I, I always suggest get your foot in the door. Do an internship. If you're coming right out of school, get the experience. Because they're not going to teach you. those. That's real world experience. You're not going to learn anything in a book that you're going to learn in the real world, in the actual marketplace where businesses are working on real projects with real clients and at a fast pace, at a high volume, it's a warp speed course. You know, so I always recommend that to then really understand what do you really like? What do you really want to do? You know, um, and then start making a decision as to what to do. But if you do decide to go ahead and become that entrepreneur and start your own gig, have a strong set of, of, of you know, have that foundation, strong set of skills, maybe be a little focused on one particular area, not be a jack of all trades. Just don't. I think, I think that kind of actually – you know, that's very similar to how you started the company, right? Like you're also, you're su suggesting just younger people out of college, maybe they start with something that's not paying as much or internships or, or really they're following the experience more than the money. Um, and I think that's a, it's a lesson that not only I've learned from how you told your story about how you started, but that's a very similar story that I hear over and over again is um, I, I would bet that if we were to count, you know, the episodes prior to this, how many people did their first project for free? it would probably be more than 50%. Um, and, it, and, you know, from the outside, I think it seems like a stupid idea, but when you start to get into it and you start to learn these success stories, you realize that a lot of times that is what you have to do. And again, I think that's the same as just getting out of college and not even wanting to start a company or a marketing agency, um, but just doing things for cheap, doing things for free. If you can, obviously, you know, there's a lot of factors into that, but sure. um, to really get that experience um, and then, you know, maybe go for the money if that's your goal. Yeah. I know a lot of people, unfortunately, they, they just want the money. Even even with the kids in college, they could still be in college or they could be out of college and they're just looking for those internships, those paid internships. How can I make money? And, and that's, I mean, listen, that's, everybody wants to make money. But if you look at the bigger picture and the experience that you can gain to set the stage for other things, way more than what someone's going to give you $15 an hour for or more. It's just priceless. I think it's the byproduct of your accomplishments, not the accomplishment itself, money. Um, uh, what, what's your full-time versus contractor split right now? Mm -hmm. In the company now, um, we might be 60-40. 60, 60 full-time? 60 full time, yeah, about 40%. It was still a decent um, amount. And that, yeah, uh, well, that number went up. It wasn't as much um, prior uh, to 2022. We probably were as maybe 75, 25, maybe. Um, but because we started to shift a bit, we started to refocus on different areas of the business and how can we surround ourselves with even more talent and resources. I started to source out more of these people. So those numbers have then driven up. Um, all different areas, brand strategists, ad specialists, um, more, uh, more developers is always important. Different areas, because fortunately, we do have a good volume. We are constantly speaking to new people. And we always, it's important too, when I speak with new clients, I'm always speaking about strategy. 
And I bring that back to the team so that we can work internally and brainstorm and then present that back to the client um, for that contract. So the more minds, the better, in my opinion. Um, so that's kind of been, you know, some of the focus last year. Besides hiring more talent internally last year, senior talent, we start to look into more, um, more expert uh, subcontractors. More on the consultant side? No, even to execute. Um, you know, they're a combination. If I'm bringing an ad specialist who strictly focuses on social ads, now we, all, we do that in-house too. I have a full social media division. But sometimes you want different opinions or because of your volume, you need additional assistance. Um, and to tell you the truth, and this is something maybe um, another piece of advice for those, those new entrepreneurs, at this stage in the game, all these years in, and the plan, the direction that we have now, I don't have time at this moment to wait for people to develop. I don't. You want to bring in, you want to bring in experts, you want to bring in people that know what they're doing, that they're responsible, they're going to, they're going to execute. That's, that's where I'm at today. Um, that's one of the main focuses here of bringing in new talent. Um, I, uh, well, I should say utilizing more contractors um, and from, from also uh, from a business pr perspective as well, from, from overhead, it makes sense too especially with, with entrepreneurs. That's why building a company all those years ago, utilizing contractors was key because they weren't on payroll. They were per project. You can manage your money better utilizing contractors in that sense. You knew exactly what you were paying out, regardless if the project took three months to, to complete you didn't have to worry about weekly paychecks with this particular person that all of a sudden you're in the red. That would be a piece of advice for anybody starting out um, in this type of industry and looking to build up a team. Do you have any best practices or, or any tips for hiring, whether full-time or contractors? Hire for your needs. When hiring, do not, do not hire do not put out a job description. Do not put out, don't, don't, don't hire to uh, go ahead and, and, and have a general sense of what someone can do. Hire for your exact need. If you want a specific person to run Google ad campaigns, look for that person who's an expert in that. That's it. Don't look for the person that has X amount too that they're bringing into play because I guarantee you that person is not an expert in that one area then. They have knowledge of this. And you learn this over time when you do enough interviews. Oh, yes, you know, I know this, I know that. Uh, I've been exposed to it. No, hire for your specific need. Look for that only. That's, that should be in that description when you're putting out uh, for, you know, that, that listing, whatever it might be. And that goes for both sides. It goes for either uh, a full-time employee or, or even a contractor. But it definitely works better with the contractors because there's just, in my opinion, like unlimited resources out there and different, you know, resources um, or directories, websites, whatever that you can go into and, and, and go ahead and, and advertise it. Yeah, no, I think that, that totally makes sense. Um, and, and as we kind of come up to the end of the episode, I just want to kind of ask some questions that I, I tend to ask at the end, which is, um, if you had to teach something to other marketers, what would it be? That's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I would probably teach, I have so many, I guess, experiences over the years, and I, I think I have to go back to the importance of the client relationship, I think, because that's not something that you're going to you're going to learn so much in a book. That's real world experience. I could teach you. It's almost going back to and I'll just I'll go off track just a little bit here, but but it, 
it, it goes back to my mentality of I could teach someone how to use Photoshop. I could teach somebody how to code, let's say. But I can't teach them the passion, the drive, or the motivation to excel in whatever they do. I can't teach it. It has to come from within, right? So those are characteristics and qualities of a person. And that's what I look for all the time with, with in-house staff, people who, who own it and, and take ownership and make it their own. But if I would teach an entrepreneur coming into this industry the importance of client relationships, that goes beyond the skill sets of what we're actually doing for them. And you're, you're creating that personal relationship with the client that's so key to making them feel like they're number one priority, that they matter, that they're being listened to is very important. A lot of people in this industry have their own agendas when setting up a marketing strategy, a campaign and whatnot, and not really understanding what the mission and objective is for that particular client or business. So you want to listen more than you're speaking initially with those, with those clients. So I think, and you might've heard this before, Josh, when it comes to retaining clients is much harder than actually gaining new clients. So the importance of the relationship after they sign that contract is key. And it comes down to communication and to always uh, being in their face in some way, fit, uh, shape or form. It's so important recognizing them. And I would, I would probably hone in on that because you, you work so hard to get those clients. You got to keep them. It's also a lot cheaper. Uh, to keep clients than to look at new clients. So you get the, the double benefit. Right. You actually gave me goosebumps right. for a second there because I have this thing that I've just personally focused on. Um, it's, it's essentially, there's a lot more to it, but this question of what makes a successful person. Um, and, and I try to put traits to it, you know, um, whether it's fair or not, we'll find out at some point. But you mentioned, you mentioned passion, drive, and motivation. And, and the three traits that I've actually identified uh, that I think make, make a successful person are um, self-awareness, motivation, and discipline. Uh, so you can actually take passion as a lot of self-awareness. Drive is uh, going to be a little bit more of the discipline, and then motivation is motivation. So I think you've also kind of identified three very similar traits um, into, again, you know, what makes a success successful person. Um, yeah. No, that was great. Sure. Uh, sure. Last question is any book or podcast recommendations? Oh, so uh, it can be a marketing I, business. Not, neither of yeah. I'm I'm gonna recommend a podcast. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a, a a shout out to a good friend of mine, and he he runs a very successful agency um, in South Carolina, and I was with him at an event in California uh, a couple of months ago called Think Billions. His podcast is in the top twenty five of marketing podcasts out there. It's called the Radcast. And, Radcast, uh, R-A-D. Rad, A, yep, R-A-D, cast. Um, just a great, great podcast. Um, his name is Ryan Alford, um, and uh, I'll recommend that. He's a great dude. He knows his stuff. He's all about bringing the, the human element, the human voice to the marketing side. You know, how we forget sometimes you know, how important that is to, to, you know, to really, whatever we might be marketing or saying, how, how can it resonate with, with your potential prospect, with your target audience, and to really bring it back to that human connection, We're all about that, cutting through the noise um, and eliminating those distractions in your, in your marketing tactics and such. You'll learn a lot from him. He's, he's great. That was great. We, you know, obviously this is my favorite question and, and we get some things that are similar. Um, uh, but that was a new one. So that was, that was awesome. And, uh, so as we do come to the end of the episode, I just want to give you an opportunity to mention how people can find you and really anything else that you want to end with. Awesome. Appreciate it. Well, this is, this was great. It was fun. I, I, I always love doing these things and, and talking about experiences and my journey and, uh, how, you know, we're not done yet after all of these years. I, I don't feel like I've been doing this for this long, a quarter of a century almost, imagine. Um, 
But um, you could find me at my website is msmdigitalmedia.com. And that's MSM as in Mary St. Mary, digital media. You could also, I would love uh, for you to follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram. I started to build up. That was one of the missions last year was actually build up the personal brand for the first time in all these years, step away uh, and outside the company a little bit. And just we're putting out value and education every day. That's what I do there. So it's my full name, Mario S. Mirabella. You can find me on LinkedIn or Instagram. Awesome. We will uh, we'll link all of those. I think that was great. And uh, to be honest, I think this is one of my favorite episodes. We, we flew through a 30 minute mark and I was going to end it early, but I, I just thought there was so much not just co- good content, but actionable content that you shared. Um, so just, yeah, just want to say thank you for coming on the show and uh, I hope everyone has a successful day. Awesome. I appreciate it, Josh. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Masters in Marketing Agency podcast. I hope you got a ton of value out of this episode. And before we go, I just want to thank our sponsors, DevNoodle. DevNoodle provides marketing agencies with the ability to offer their clients unlimited website design, build, and management services with fixed monthly plans. If website design, development, and maintenance is holding your agency back from growing, please reach out to us at devnoodle.com, where we make websites easy, easy for you and easy for your clients, devnoodle.com.